Let's turn our Bibles to Book of Proverbs. Book of Proverbs, chapter 26. Book of Proverbs, chapter 26. Proverbs 26. We'll be looking at verses 13 through 16. Proverbs 26, verses 13 through 16. The title of the message is, Don't Be Lazy Serving the Lord. Don't Be Lazy Serving the Lord. Amen. Proverbs 26, verse 13. The Bible says, The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. The slothful hideth his hand in his bosom. He graveth him to bring it again to his mouth. The slugger is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. Brother Jake, can you please pray for the message? Don't be lazy serving the Lord. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, before I go on, you know, continue to pray for, you know, our brethren, you know, who's recovering from various surgeries, right? Pray yes. for Sister Chizan yes. for her complete surgery and everyone else. So don't be lazy serving the Lord. So laziness is a disease that everyone has. You, know, you can't deny it. You know, every single Christian, every single non-Christian, they have a laziness problem. As we see, you know, Bible in the Proverbs especially talks about a lot of laziness, a lot of lazy people, slothful people, right? We see a real good case here. I mean, this guy will give every single reason in the world, every single excuse in the world not to do anything. Christians, this day and age, will give every single reason in the world, every excuse possible not to serve the Lord. They'll do everything they can to not go to church. They'll do everything they can to miss the ministry. And they'll do everything they can to not to read the Bible, not to pray, and don't do anything for the Lord. But the funny thing is, when it's time to do what they love to do, you know, they're the most diligent person ever. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I think it's always strange. I mean, I was at fault. So church starts at 10. Uh, there's always stragglers out there. But if it's a pattern, that's on you. We all have, you know, our issues. You know, especially people raising children. You know, sometimes taking care of children is, is a lot. So it takes them sometimes, you know, a while to get them ready. But if that happens every single week, then the problem is with you. Something's wrong with you. Guilty. You can't really manage the time well. Yes. But... When you go to work, I know for sure you're not always late because you're not fired yet, right? <laughs> you still have a job. Yeah. But when it comes to serving the Lord, you think it's always a secondary. You know, do you realize that when you do come late to any church meetings, not because of, you know, external reasons or special circumstance, it just shows how much you care about the Lord. If you do go to work on time or school on time, that just shows that for work and school, it's more important to you right. yes. than things of God, serving the Lord. Yeah. I mean, don't be, you know, smart aleck about it and says, at least I'm here. Good for you, right? It's not for me. It's for your own good. Yes. You know, don't think that I get the most benefit and pleasure of you being here. 
I mean, don't get me wrong. I thank God for you here. However, it's between you and the Lord, right? If you were to, if the Lord was literally here, like, you know, back in the days in the gospel, even like in millennium, he goes, hey, John, I want to meet you exactly at 7 p.m. You know what? I guarantee you, knowing the Lord and knowing him as your Savior, you'll be there way before. Because, you know, you fear him, right? And then he's your love of your life. He's your Savior. Yes. However, since you can't see him, a lot of Christians, what happens is that if you can't see, it's not that important. And that's where the faith disappears from Christians, right? right. You know, faith is all about believing in things that we can't see. Right. But Christians always have to see to believe. I mean, thank God that if you trusted Jesus Christ and him alone to save you from hell, as your Lord and Savior, you're saved. But afterwards, it's just you working and working and working. I mean, that's the Bible's work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I mean, don't get confused at all. Oh, I have to do that, you know, to get saved. No, once saved, always saved. Thank you, Lord. But as a Christian, after you've gotten saved, you know, what you do for the Lord will determine your place in millennium, yeah. right? right? Throughout the whole thing. I mean, that's where you and I have to, like, get our minds back at it. Work's important. School's important. Family's important. You know, other things going on in your important. But are they more important than the Lord? No. I mean, that's why people don't realize it. They give excuses. You know, you know what? I work graveyard shift. Okay. Does that mean that you can't have right relations with the Lord? Even after a graveyard shift, if you have to go watch a football game, if you have to meet your girlfriend or boyfriend, you do it. Yeah. Because you love them and you love it. But when it comes to the Lord, that's the first excuse, excuse a lot of people give, right? right. I'm too tired. Yeah. I'm too tired. Everybody's tired in this world, right? Yes. But why is it that successful people, despite the tiredness, they just succeed, right? right? They overcome their tiredness. And you and I can't be that Christian who always blames the work hours, tiredness to not serving the Lord. Yeah. Think about it. If you do know that you have to work until midnight, right, then you plan it out. I have to work until midnight, but you know what? I'm, you know, I'm going to ask the Lord to give me strength to do everything that I still need to do for the Lord before I go to sleep. Amen. I mean, why do you always have to be like, okay, I'm too tired. It's midnight. I go to sleep. I, I mean, I guess you're life clock or balance might be off, right? But you're just off, period. <laughs> Your brain's already off when yeah, you're filled, filled with the worldly ideas and devil and the world. Yes. Yeah. Only the things of God. When Jesus Christ prayed, he prayed through the night. Do you think he was caring about, okay, I need to get eight hours of sleep, you know? I need to make sure that I eat my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No, he did it. Yeah. Because he had to, and because he wanted to. Yeah. Like, you and I have to do it, do things for the Lord, because we want to. Right? Yes. Many times, what you love shows by your actions. Yes, As I go back to the example of, like, your work, right? You know, say you have graveyard shift, and then you work from 10 to 6, right? I've done graveyard shift in the past. And I don't... You, do you really necessarily need to sleep through the rest of them? You know, your body will adjust. That's the you know, great thing about human body. Yeah. Human body does adjust. It's just that you who doesn't want to adjust to the Lord. You want your body to just feel the pleasures, right? That's why, you know, when it's time to do things for the Lord, you know, you always have your butt on the sofa or the bed. You don't really want to do anything for the Lord. I found out that the most tired when I'm in, the tiredness, tire, tiring state I'm in, and when I do something for the Lord, that's when I get most blessed. Amen. Yeah. More than, you know, I'm all, you know, 
like full of energy, you know, having to do it. Then when I'm at the, my most weakest point, I decide to not listen to my flesh devil in the world and do something for the Lord because I love the Lord. That's when you get most blessing. So the reason you don't serve the Lord is you're just lazy like this person. You might not be lazy for the worldly things, but you're lazy for the spiritual things. Man, that's like the worst hypocrite Christian in the whole world. Like many Christians, they're known as an exemplary person outside the church. For example, at work, at school, and whatever you do. But when it comes to spiritual things, you haven't grown. You're still a child or you're just a baby, right? Yes. Do you think everything that you accomplish and do outside of, you know, doing something for the Lord, you think it will last? You'll burn up at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. And you're just going to be ashamed. And you're just going to be regretting. Why should you and I have just regrets over regrets when we do actually know the answer yeah. and we do know the solution? Yes. I think the most foolish person in this world is knowing the solution and just not doing it. Right. There are certain people who's ignorant or who just, I don't know, for whatever situation they're in, they just don't know the answer. I can't expect that person to do the right thing if they don't even know the right answer. But you and I have the right answer, right? We have the King James Bible. So you cannot have any reason not serving the Lord. I'm sorry that, you know, You know, I know, I mean, my wife goes through the health issues. I mean, I'm sorry that you have to go through health issues, right? But there's always a reason, right? And the number one thing is that through those trials and tribulation, you can get closer to the Lord. You will definitely rely on the Lord more than, say, you know, just a young, healthy person, right? At that, I mean, that is one, you know, silver lining, as they say. Are you going to just complain your way? through it. I've seen many Christians out there who become very, how should I say, sorry for themselves. When you're sorry for yourself, you can't serve the Lord. You can't. You just kind of hide in the corner over there. It's almost as if you're giving yourself a timeout, right? Like, Lord's out there, or say, march on, march on, right? In the endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. But you go to the corner voluntarily. I mean, how many kids want to be, go to timeout, right? None of them, right? But, you know, you go to the timeout corner over there, just looking at your reflection in the mirror or in the, on the glass, or even just the wall with your shadow. And then you're just like being sorry for yourself. I'm sorry. You know, you live like that, you'll never serve the Lord. Yeah. You can't. But that's what devil wants, though. Yes. Devil wants every single Christian to face trials and temptations, fail, and just start feeling sorry for yourself. I mean, you and I have history. Everyone has a history. Yes. You know, those little kids have history, too. And the part of history is that there are some bad things about you, right? Things that you've shared and then have been a blessing to others or things that you haven't shared and you shouldn't share. Yes. You know, because it wouldn't be a blessing to others. But you have a history yeah. and you have that bad history because everybody's a sinner. So don't be someone, you know, says, I never killed anyone. I never robbed a bank. So I'm not, you know, I all have good history. No, you know, you ever, do you realize that even right now, in your thoughts and in your minds, right? You know, you're constantly having opportunity to sin. Yes. Right? All those wicked thoughts are going through you. And then you harbor on it, you start, you know, debating on it, and you've already committed the sin. Right? Mm-hmm. right? right. So, I mean, for example, I mean, you should be concentrating on the Word of God. Now you're just thinking about, oh, what about the TV show? You know, what about the sporting event? Right? You know, what about... You know, that girl, what about that guy, right? Instead of concentrating on the Word of God, you're concentrating on, you know, other things, right? Don't tell me that's not sin, you know? You're not giving your all to the Lord. Then it comes to a 
yourself. You know, first question that you should always ask yourself so that you won't be lazy serving the Lord is that, do I love the Lord? That's, that's the question you should ask. Do I really love the Lord? If you love someone, I guarantee you, you're going to serve him. You're going to sacrifice. Yeah. You're going to give your all. I mean, married couple, you know, look at how you guys came together, right? Even if we, I mean, if, I guess arranged marriage may be a little different. But you guys met together. You loved each other. And you couldn't wait to spend every second with each other, right? Yes. You, you work 40, 60, 80 hours, but you were still very happy, most happy to see that loved one, yes. right? Yes. And if they needed something, and if you had every ability to do it, you'd do it right. without any hesitation. Yes. That's what love is. If you really love the Lord, Jesus Christ, you're going to do it no matter what. That's why, you know, when I said it, right, through all the trials and tribulations and all the tiredness, laziness will not be a, you know, stumbling block for you. You just overcome it, yes. right? You know, when you see parents, when children are in danger, for example, if there's like a, something about to fall, or if there's like a even bad situations when cars coming, somehow they might have gotten you know one hour of sleep, but they have the strength to protect their children, yeah, yeah. cover their children. They'll rather get hurt, right? Yes. Normal parents, there are a lot of crazy ones out there throwing <laughs> children out the window. You know, I heard it the other day. I mean, yeah. on the freeway. Like, you know, young one, and I think one's like eight or nine, that one survived, that person, that kid. But what, you know, makes someone go crazy like that, right? And don't ever think that you and I are exempt from it. Right. We can do everything that every sinner can do. Yes. You know, so don't be foolish that, you know, I'm saved, you know, I'm ever protected from all those things based you know, for my thoughts and actions. No. You know, if you and I just go to a complete backslidden stage, we can do a lot of sins Amen. that you and I would have never imagined doing. Yes. That's why you have to have right fellowship with the Lord. Yes. I mean, I think she was complaining about solar eclipse. Yes. And then, you know, that made her do that thing. People wow. go crazy. I mean, in like China, this woman threw the kid out from the high-rise apartment wow. to her death, right? And then try to kill like family members too. What happens, right? I think, I believe that they had right set of mind, you know, before all those came about. Yes. But when you let yourself go, let the world, the devil, and the flesh start controlling your thoughts and your actions, yes. that's what's going to happen, yes. right? As Christians, then in order to stop that from happening, you have to constantly ask yourself, I mean, do I really love the Lord, yeah. right? I mean, if you really love the Lord, you can't be lazy. Amen. Huh? I mean, I want to spend more time with the Lord, yeah. you know? I mean, I, I think if I lie down, I'm going to fall asleep within two seconds, right? Yes. I, mean, I could do it, you know? Yeah. It happens to me many times. <laughs> but if I really love the Lord, I'm going to do my best yeah. just to spend time with Him. Yeah. And that means I'm not going to lie down. Yeah. You know, That's good. there's always a solution to it. Right. You know, I'll be on my knees, right? <laughs> it's harder to fall asleep on your knees yeah. than on your bed, right? right. So you got to change. Amen. If you really love the Lord, you got to change your thoughts and your behaviors. And you got to align it, not with your psychologist, psychiatrist, you know, not with the TV people. You got to align with the Word of God. Amen. Just Word of God, Right? You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it might sound to you like it's a lecture. You know, why, why is, you know, our pastor always talk to you about being on time and on time and on time? Because it just shows you how much you love the Lord. Good. Simple as that. Yes. You know? I mean, I know you. I know me. We are going to fail. Yes. We're failures. Right. Mm -hmm. But Jesus Christ made us whole. Amen. 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 
then if you don't rely on someone who made you whole, and you don't your, show your love to him, then you still continue to stay as a failure. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. And the, one of the worst words that we want to hear, right, as a man, woman, children is what? Loser, yeah. right? How different are you and I from just being a loser when we don't really love the Lord, right? Do you think John Huss, you know, John Wycliffe, Seven or Lala will look at us, oh, man, you're doing good, you know, up in heaven. No. When we don't, I mean, those, I mean, martyrs, I mean, they gave up their life for the Lord. Yeah. I mean, burned at the stake. But they were happily doing it. They're singing hymns. And I guarantee you, they were not lazy in serving the Lord. Every chance they had, they spoke of the Lord. Every chance they had, you know, they spent time with the Lord, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. If you really love the Lord, you're going to spend time with him, no matter what, yes. right? And you're going to adjust that schedule. That's why I'm saying, don't ever give excuse that my schedule is stopping me from serving the Lord, spending time with him. You put yourself in that schedule anyways, yeah. right? Yes. I mean, it's not me, right? It's not Lord or anything. Ultimately, decision was made by you. Yes. Ultimate decisions are made by me. And because of my decision, I'm not spending time with the Lord and serving the Lord. I can't blame anybody. Right. I got to go to 1 John 1, 9. Yes, sir. I got to confess my sins and get right with the Lord. That's what you got to do. Right? If you haven't really loved the Lord, you got to confess. You know, if, if someone, if married couple... They did wrong to each other. How are you going to reconcile it? You know, how are you going to get it right? Yeah. Are you going to just you know, put it under the rug? No. Are you going to, if that's the problem, are you going to just run away from it as far as possible? No. no. You deal with it. Yes. And you resolve it according to the word of God, not to your own emotions and feelings. Yes. According to the word of God, you resolve it. Then you, you and I know, you know, I've been so slothful. I've been so lazy. I mean, Colossians, you know, 3.23 said, you know, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto man. If we haven't been doing that, then we've been sinning. We've been failures. Yeah. We haven't really loved the Lord like we should. Can you imagine if you are so proud, self-willed, and haughty, Telling people, I never miss church. I never, you know, miss reading Bible and prayers. But you could have done more. Right? Certain people, I know you have more opportunity to serve the Lord. Everybody always looks at the bare minimum basic, right? Always. You know, I meet the standard. I meet the minimum. So I'm good. Right. <laughs> it's like, okay. Your wife needs help. And I already helped her once. <laughs> Twice means I'm going above and beyond. You know? I don't know if I could do it today. Before marriage, I was, you were doing it all the time. One, two, three, four, even 100. Nonstop. You constantly did it. But why? Because your love, you know, has burned out, as they True. say. Yes. Right? You and I, you know, the reason we don't serve the Lord like we should is because, you know, our first love just has waned. Yes. It's burnt out. You know, fire is not there anymore. Yeah. Right? Then what's going to happen? You're not going to serve the Lord. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. Then you have to rekindle that fire. Amen. Right? Yes. Go back to the day when you got saved. Amen. Right? Go back to the day when you knew you were a lost sinner on your way to hell, heard the gospel that Jesus Christ died for your sins, you know, was, you know, I mean, died for you, buried and resurrected. And then the day that you knew for sure that you're going to heaven once and for because you trusted him and him alone as your Lord and Savior, go, to, go back to that day. Yeah. How happy you were, how glad you were, and everything that you wanted to do for him. Yes. Do you remember that day? Sure. If you don't remember that day, then let's check your salvation, right? Yes. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like someone not remembering when your kids were born, right? You know, and your wedding day, 
like the significant event, yes. right? That's why, you know, I'm not saying you're not saved, but you should check. If yes. you remember when you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, yeah. don't rely on your parents saying, that, oh, yeah, yeah, you accepted Christ, right? You know, at the church. You know, don't, don't rely on anybody. No. Don't rely on me. Just rely on you, right? Yes. Your true memory, true self. You tr be honest. Have I really trusted Christ as my Lord and Savior? Right. Has there been any change in my life, right? Mm -hmm. Does, I mean, does, do I even he feel any Holy Spirit conviction? Yeah. Do I even care about sin, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're completely backslidden and stuff, you know, different. But if you're even, there's even a little bit of, a, you know, fire left, then you'll know, yes. right? How can you forget the day when Christ saved you from eternal lake of fire and gave you what? Eternal life in heaven. Amen. That's the greatest event that's ever happened to me. Amen. And Amen. if you're saved, that's the greatest event ever happened to you. Sure. How can you not remember, right? And going back to it, and if you remember that first love when you got saved, you'll serve the Lord. I mean, I remember, guarantee, you know, when I first truly, because I was a church goer, using, you know, NIV, never opened it, never really received the clear gospel. I was lost. But when I found out the truth through King James Bible, got saved, man. I was like, oh, this is, this is like a new world to me. What can I do to please my Savior? What can I show my love to him? Just go everywhere. Read the Bible, you know, learn all the doctrines, witness every single person that you can, right? Yes. And not sleeping to do things of God did not bother me at all. I actually enjoyed it, right? Get like three, four hours of sleep, but doing things of God. Hey, you know, that's, a, that's what you call real pleasure, yeah. right? Amen. But coming to current state after you first got to save, what are you doing? Do you find every opportunity to just sleep like this, you know, slothful man? You know? I mean, by, uh, if sleeping is your, how should I say, uh, goal in your life, <laughs> no, that's not a good goal. I mean, I don't, unsaved these CEOs, you know, leading companies, yeah. they, don't, they never say, you know, my goal in life is to sleep and sleep and sleep. No. They say, I, I might want to enjoy it. I mean, their work starts at 4, you know, yeah. go to sleep after midnight, and that's just part of their life because they love what they're doing. They have that passion and desire to do it, and that's how they succeed, right? I'm not saying that you should only sleep four hours as a Christian doing everything for the Lord, right? Maybe some of you do already, you know. Some of you wants to do, you know. God bless you for that one. But you have that opportunity to really love him more. How many of you think that I love him enough, right? No. I'm like, oh, yeah, I love Jesus Christ enough, you know. Man, I've given enough to him. No. Man. You hear that from some false preachers out there. I gave him all I could. No, no you didn't. No, exactly. I mean, I mean, are you literally spending 24-7 just doing things of the Lord? Last time I checked, you sleep, you know. <laughs> Sometimes you sleep more than you ought to, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, you know, if you're born as a, what's that thing? Sloth, <laughs> who needs to sleep like 20 hours, right? Yeah. You know, to live a okay life, or that's you know, the, sloth is an animal, okay? Yes, yeah, real. Why do you want to compare yourself to that animal? <laughs> All right, that's why the Bible says slothful man. Amen. Right? Yes. Do you really need to sleep 12, 14 hours a day? No, sir. No. I mean, they, there's a sleeping cycle, so like, like six hours, nine hours. It, it doesn't matter. You just. Make sure that you find time to serve the Lord each day. Amen. You can't just serve the Lord on street preaching days. You can't just serve the Lord during Jubilee days. You can't just serve the Lord on Sundays. You have to serve the Lord every single day. Amen. And that's most important. Right? And let's not give excuses as a Christian. It was too busy. Was the Lord too busy 
that, you know, he didn't die for you. Wow. He was never busy for you and me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I mean, he was going as a God in human form. Went through every single temptation, yes. every single ridicule. Yes. I mean, blood was coming out of his pores yes. when he was praying, yeah. taking the sins of the whole world. Do you think Lord gave excuse to God the Father? Father, I'm too tired. <laughs> you know, I can't do this. God, I'm too tired to be on the cross this day. You know, give me one more day. Give me two more days. Next Give me three Sunday. more days. <laughs> Isn't that what you and I do? Yeah. Always. Amen. I'll do it tomorrow, honey. Yeah. I'll read the Bible tomorrow, Lord. I'm supposed to read three chapters today. I'll read six chapters tomorrow. Yeah. It becomes nine. It becomes 12. Right. Man, now it's the end of the year, and you're still in Genesis. <laughs> or you're still in Psalms. You start out at Psalms with short chapters. And you don't go to all, anywhere else. And then you're like, okay, I have next year. What if there's no next year? Yeah. If the Lord comes back. Yeah. And do you really want to be found as a lazy Christian? No. Man, that's the last thing at the judgment of Christ. Right. They play your life, you know, up in the air. Millions, if not billions, safe souls are up there. Yes. Lord's judging you. I mean, playing your life. Uh, every single second you waste it will be shown over there. Every single. I mean, that's why at least what you and I should do, like as I mentioned, you got to get right with the Lord. Right. You know, confess your sins, right? Get right with the Lord so that you wouldn't play up there. Yes. I mean, because you want it to be judged down here, not up there. Amen. Man, I don't know. I mean, how can the second... Corinthians chapter 5, knowing the terror of the Lord, man, it's got to be scary. You know, some people serve the Lord, uh, serve certain person, you know, because they fear them, right? Like, think about it. If you are serving Napoleon, Napoleon says, do this. Or you're going to say, hey, you know, I can't listen to you. Yeah. I guarantee every single one of his, you know, subordinates, direct reports, you know, his generals, you know, captains, they did it right away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, without any doubt. And think about war. They don't just fight, you know, eight to five. <laughs> I tell you that, right? You know, they fight 24-7. And a lot of times when everyone's sleeping, yes. right? And they're alert. And that's, you know, he ultimately failed. But, you know, he succeeded many times like yes. that. I mean, as Christians, you just always... Tell yourself, you know what? I only could have served the Lord at a certain amount of, certain period of time, right? That, that's, that to me, you know, it's like always giving excuses, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's like someone who goes, well, I could only meet you for 10 minutes. And then when the 10 minute comes, go, and you're in the middle of very important conversation, which is helpful to you, you're like foolish. Okay, I'm done. Right? You're thinking about the biggest decision of your life. Say you're meeting a you know, future wife or husband. Look, I could only talk to you for five minutes. And then she's asking, oh, where should we get married? I'm done. You know, <laughs> you, know? you just leave, right? I'll talk to you again. But that person will never call you back, yeah. right? Yeah. Knowing your heart. I mean, the true you will always show itself. So don't be foolish, brethren, that, you know, you could hide, you know, underneath your, you know, flesh that, oh, no one can figure me out. Lord already figured you out. Yeah. And Lord will eventually show it to every single person if we don't get right with the Lord. That's how God always does it, right? If you're a lazy Christian, God will show it to you. You don't get right with the Lord, God will show it to other people. And if you don't get right, even you are shown to the other people, then you'll be lost in the ministry. That's it. You leave the ministry, you know, and then at the end of the day, you're just going to complain. You know, the pastor hated me, you know, and then create all these false accusations, right? 
and then leave a very, very, how should I say, you know, bitter yeah. Christian life. You don't want that, no. right? Absolutely. So look at your life right now. I'm not saying 10 years ago. I'm not saying when you first got saved. No. Look at your life right now. Just look at yesterday, which was Saturday, right? Did you really serve the Lord? Did you really do it from the bottom of your heart? Did you do it to your best of ability so that you have no regrets, right? You're like, I don't know what to do. What do you mean by serving the Lord? Read the Bible, right? And you get to know how to serve the Lord more, right? It's not a, you know, where someone has to constantly guide you. The Bible has the answers. The fact that you're asking that question tells me that you don't read the Bible. Simple as that. It's like you're asking someone, you know, baseball coach, right, who told you to study how to throw fastball, right? And then two years later, you ask the same question to the coach. How do I throw the fastball? <laughs> right? <laughs> Even though he's gone through it with you many, many, many times. It's like you're telling the Lord, Lord, how do I serve you? You've been saved for what, 15 years now, 20 years now? You're still asking that question? Yeah. There's the answer. Why? Because you've been lazy, Christian. Yes. You've, been, you've, been, you've, been, you've been a sloth, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong, it feels good. Just lie on your bed, you know, lie on your couch and just do nothing or just play with your phone. You know, watch TV, do your laptop or whatnot, right? Yes. But are you going to exchange pleasures of your flesh, you know, with your eternity, no. right? Are you going to exchange love for your flesh and your pleasure with all the rewards? But ultimately, are you going to replace, you know, Lord's love with your own desires with your own love to yourself. If you love yourself too much, you can't serve the Lord. Simple as that. How much do you love yourself? Right. So first question, do you really love the Lord? Second question, how much do you love yourself? Right. You shouldn't. <laughs> I shouldn't. Right. It's not about hating your self per se, right? Let's not go off the rails and, oh, man, you know, preacher said I have to hate myself, you know, all that. I mean, you have certain things that you shouldn't listen to, which is old you, yeah. which is your flesh and its desires. Right. Yeah, just say no. You know, according to the word of God, it's crucified with Christ. Amen. Yes. It's dead. So don't listen to the dead things. So when you are serving the Lord, listen to the Lord. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Look at the Word of God. Don't listen to what your flesh wants to do. Right? Yes. You're always getting a bind, right? Now going back to, you know, timekeeping. You know. And the Bible also says, you know, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Yes. Going to the timekeeping, okay? Your flesh just keep on telling you. It's okay, five minute late, 10 minute late, you know, it's fine. You're only going to miss, you know, a couple of singing, right? Maybe a prayer over there. You do know that we sing to get hearts ready and praise to God right. before the message. Do you think you'll be as blessed when you just come for the message right at the spot? No. And miss rest of the worship and praise part? You're not. It's like you only watched, you know, half of the game and you missed the other half. You know, which was the exciting part as well. And which was blessing to you. That's why I think the measure is very important. You have to set up a measure, and that measure is when it comes to the time. Do you show your love for the Lord in your time, right? 
Yeah, don't be like someone who's always going to be known as, oh yeah, 1010, there he is. 1020, there he is, right? Like whenever there's a meeting. Again, if it's out of it, you work until you know, 9.50 and it takes you 20 minutes to drive here or get ready and then you're late, hey, you know, it's out of you know, your hand. But you got a great night of rest Saturday night and then you're just lollygagging in the morning. And they're like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to be there, but it's okay. And then man, head of the household, you know, I hope you don't have that type of attitude and have that kind of testimony to your family. I mean, if your wife says, honey, it's okay, let's be there a little late, you shouldn't be the one, yeah, yeah, I agree. No, no right. you know, no. we've got to be a good testimony to our children, yes. right? What do you think your children is going to learn from you? Lazy? Yes. Parent? When it comes to things of God? Then what do you think they're going to turn out to be? Lazy children who turns out to be lazy parent in the future. Yes. You are grooming or you are, you know, how should I say? I shouldn't say the, you know, grooming, but you are raising children to be just like you. Yes. Right? I mean, the biggest role model for children are their parents, right? And they're going to become just like you. Imagine that. You know, parents, whoever you are right now, do you want your child or children to be just like you? No. Where you are? We're well, one honest person here, yeah. right? Do you? When you don't serve the Lord like you should, you've been such a lazy Christian, and again, there is a different standard for each person when it comes to laziness, right? Some people doing their best might be reading few chapters, but some people doing their best is not reading few chapters. They have plenty of time to read multiple, multiple chapters, right? It all comes down to are you doing your best for the Lord, living a balanced Christian life. Don't ever exchange it, though where you become a lazy worker, lazy student, lazy husband, you know, lazy wife, lazy children, and just 24-7 immerse yourself just reading the Word of God, that's not a balanced Christian life. Yeah. It's just that you're doing every single part of your life not neglecting spiritual things, yeah. doing it. So certain people, you might have a, Easier opportunity, certain people, harder opportunity. But God is fair, God. Yes. We all know that. You know, God will not give you anything that you can't bear, right? God won't give me anything that I can't bear either, right? So you can't be saying that, oh, if this same thing were happened to that brother or sister, they'll never do it. Don't compare yourself with other brethren, right? If you don't want to be lazy serving the Lord, don't compare. They're who they are. Are you going to, I mean, obviously the answer is the same. If someone's going to a cliff and they're going to fall out and die, are you going to just follow them? No. Bad things, you're not going to follow. But when it comes to spiritual things, oh, yeah, he, he used to street preach all the time. He used to witness all the time. He used to teach, and he used to read the Bible. I mean, he used to memorize the Word of God. I mean, he was great, great, great Christian. But now... You know, he's backslidden. He doesn't do anything. Since he doesn't do it, I'm not going to do it. Man, that is a bad, bad excuse. Yes. Don't compare yourself to other Christians. You know who you should compare yourself to? Yeah, Lord Jesus Christ. Then we always come short. Yes. We always fall short. Always. Then we have to do better and better and better. It's like this, you know. There's never been a person who hit baseball, you know, 1,000 percent, as in their betting average was never, you know, 1.000. It's always been like, you know, 300, 400. If you could hit, you know, base it in 30 percent of the time, you're considered a great hitter. So they constantly try to improve, improve, because what they're trying to get to perfect will never happen but they could get as close to it. 
You and I, until, you know, that day, right, until the Lord comes back, we won't have a perfect body, right? Yeah. But we could strive to be as best a Christian that we can be. Yes. And the best way to do that, you know, besides from loving the Lord, getting rid of your pride, is be diligent. Don't be lazy. And laziness is a disease that will plague the whole family, whole church, and it has plagued the whole nation, right? Yes. I mean, you've seen a lot of countries that are poor and not doing well. They're lazy. They don't do anything. I mean, don't come back and say, oh, you know, certain parties are already cursed and stuff. Okay, right? If you want to be so, you know, doctrinally correct, yeah, yeah, but generally speaking, when people are lazy, country will not succeed. I mean, think about Korea. I mean, it went through the, you know, Korean War and stuff. It was poor. I mean, super poor, right? But, you know, they're known for just workaholics. Like, just like Japan, like, work like what? I don't know, 80 hours is like a normal thing. You know, that's how countries, you know, you know they, they went fast forward. But certain countries, they don't, right? right. And as a Christian... You're either going to be a diligent Christian or you're just going to be a lazy Christian, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to do anything for the Lord, just stay where you are. It's very easy to stay where you are. Yes. Yeah? But if you want to do something for the Lord, something for the Lord, and if you want to constantly serve Him, you got to get rid of that four-letter four word, lazy, right? You got to just get rid of it. Yeah. Every time lazy clip, I mean, creeps to you, like get closer to you, you got to just kick it, right? <laughs> you got to kick it. But when you're kicking it, what are you doing? You're moving, right? Yeah. You got to move, you know? You, know don't, you can't be a stationary Christian, you know? There are cults out there. They're out there in the corner just being stationary. Yes. It's not a blessing to anybody, no. you know? You do not want to be a stationary Christian, you know? At every moment, at every, you know, second of the day, you got to be a moving Christian for the Lord. And the sleep is included in that time, so don't worry. Yeah. You know, you'll get to sleep a little bit, Right? But don't let sleep becomes like your most favorite thing ever to do in your life. That's a recipe for being a lazy, lazy Christian. Yes. Let's be found faithful, brethren. Amen. Lord's coming back soon. Yes. Let's be diligent. Amen. Let's think about it. Let's go back to that first love. Rekindle it. Right? The fact that you're here and listening, fire is still there. Amen. Amen. You just have to work harder to get it burned again. Let it burn the whole place, right? Yes. Burn, burn your whole self, right? And don't take it literally. I have to say it. You know? Don't take it literally, you know, people, and go home and start burning yourself and then try to, you know, accuse. No, no, no. Spiritually speaking, right? Let that zeal and passion Amen. for the Lord, let it burn again. Yes. And that first love, don't forget. If you've yes. forgotten it, get right with the Lord. That's what's the great part of our Lord. Amen. He, he'll, he'll, he'll forgive you if Amen. you do it bottom of your heart. Yes. He forgets it, yeah. right? You reap what you sow, right? But as far as that sin is concerned, it's gone. Woo. Can, you tell, can you imagine if a you know, judge tells a criminal, you know what? You need to, you have like a list of thousand, you know, crimes that you committed. It's gone. Wow. Yeah. You know, they, 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 they pour out their tears. They're, they can't be more thankful. Yes. Right? And then those people are, who are genuine, you know, they'll really, really try to live a good life. Right? Yeah. But we're, not, we're better than that. Right. All of our crimes from zero to, you know, gazillion has been forgiven Amen. once and for all. Amen. I mean, don't you want to serve the Lord who, created, who is creator of the universe and who saved you from hell? Man, I love to serve him. It's just that your sin, your pride, your laziness has gotten in the way too many times. It's time to just kick it. Amen. Kick it out of the ones and for all. Every time he comes to you, just like that soccer ball coming at you, just <laughs> kick it. Ask our kids. They love to kick, right? Yeah. Like, it comes to you, just kick it. Just kick it. Like your eyes closing, just kick it. You know? <laughs> it's another laziness coming your way. Let's pray. Dear Father. As Christians, 
we're supposed to be light of this world. But however, there's one thing that laziness has gotten in the way. We find every excuse to use laziness as excuse not to serve you, Lord. Help us not to be lazy in serving you, Lord God. Help us to make sure and understand what you've done for us and how much you loved us and how much we ought to love you, Lord. And I pray that we'll be found faithful. Just don't think about pleasures of this world, but think about the love that you've given to us and how much love we can give to you and to these lost souls out there in this world and to our brethren and our family, Lord God. I pray that you bless the rest of the day and above all, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.